everybody so today i will be delivering my lecture on advanced techniques for fortification of oil and fats for better health benefits so before starting how we can add fortification and what is fortification i will just uh, introduce with you you about the fats and oils basically if we look into the chemistry the oils and fat they are triglycerides they are made up of one glycerol unit and with this glycerol unit that is composed of three carbon number and having three hydroxyl oh groups these oh groups are linked with the ester bond with three different kind of fatty acids so most of the oil and fat they are chemically triglycerides now what is the difference in fat and oil on looking physically if the lipid content or fat or oil is in the liquid form at 25 degree centigrade these are called oils and if the fat or oil that is solid at 25 degree centigrade it is called fat these are the examples ghee lard butter shortening and all vegetable oil come under the category of oils now what are the uses of fats and oil they provide more energy if we consume 1 gram of carbohydrates or proteins we get 4 kilocalories and same amount of the fat give you 9 kilocalories so we should not or uh, we should not uh, avoid taking fat or oil and only using carbohydrates and proteins it is not recommended because we need some minor components in our diet they are called vital amines or vitamins and a d e and k among them are oil soluble if we will not be taking the fat or oil they will not be taken as well as they will not be absorbed in our body and also we need for our body some essential fatty acids like linoleic linoleic omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids so mostly these fatty acids are provided by fats and oils so we should not stop taking fat and oil we should advocate that some quantity of fat and oil should be taken now coming to fortification what is fortification fortification means to add something any nutrient which is originally not present whether it may be present or not be present in your food we can add a component which was earlier present but later on during processing or other things it is removed so we can add from outside that is called fortification why uh, why we are doing fortification generally the aim of fortification is to help muscles to achieve the daily required nutrients as recommended by nitri uh, due, uh, nutrient uh, our, as in case of india we have a nin so uh, we have daily recommendation for different nutrients so all governments according to their climatic condition geographic conditions they make some recommendation that their average population should get minimum of these nutrients so to meet those nutrient requirement fortification has to be done and it is sometimes what happens the intake of some of the nutrients is very low in a, the diets so uh, to meet the those minimum standards fortification is required now there are two possibilities that you can restore as we all know the you have studied in your earlier days why we are doing the processing in all kind of food although we are targeting today oil and fat when we uh, get the oil and fat what we see, you must have learned through your processing lectures that most of the vitamins nutrients phenolic compounds antioxidants 
during the uh, refining process they all are lost so in order which were earlier present to restore them we have to do fortification and sometimes we make some kind of food which have to substitute other like for cow milk we are making soya milk so what is present in cow milk we have to want to add those nutrients in soya then that is called substitution so need of fortification why this topic started why uh, the countries started this fortification in countries where intake of certain nutrients are very low fortification can help to reduce nutrient deficiency diseases as we all know that by uh, fortification of some foods may also be seen as providing a marketing advantage especially where the purchasers have some awareness okay that is also a marketing strategy in certain cases not all cases so now when we are uh, taking talking about the fortification now to this topic is fortification of uh, 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 oil so what component our vehicle for fortification is oil so when we select component to be fortified for that component a choice of vehicle is very important say i am talking today about vitamin a d e and k so these are fat soluble vitamins if i am adding it into the flour or it into some juice so it will not be advisable to add fat soluble vitamin into water soluble uh, water vehicle so choice of vehicle is very important as we are all know that iodine so our salt is a very good carrier for that and it is reaching to the masses that is why iodine was added in the uh, our uh, salt if we want to uh, add or fortify vitamin a or d we want to give it to the masses then we have to take or choose a good vehicle or carrier for these piles are the best carrier so we will be uh, you can see on the slides that certain countries they have selected this uh, career or they have they have been doing this uh, fortification of oil and fat from uh, about 70 years european countries they are all already adding vitamin a and d in their diets so this is the market this is the market of the um, blended or the not blended sorry fortified edible oil this is uh, international market it is shown that in the 2018 that us dollar so many million dollars 6370 in which only vitamin a is added vitamin d is little less vitamin e is still less so uh, the international as well as national market for fortified edible oil is there this is the business of malnutrition considering those in india this is the scenario in india in which it is so shown that uh, total cost 1675 crore for edible oil the data from where i picture i have taken the picture data was not shown but still uh, now we can see on our all uh, our shelf that all kind of oils are mostly fortified with a and d these are fat soluble vitamins i have already talked a d e and k they they are released absorbed and transported with fat and their significant quantities are stored in liver so we should consume only consumption because they are stored in our body so excess of these become toxic if we do not take or we take excess amount from the recommended dietary allowance and they can accumulate to the toxic content also so we have to monitor the intake of these to our uh, uh, whatever things we are taking for which are fortified with a and d now uh, although it is not may not be your uh, suitable to talk discuss about detail but uh, i just wanted to show you some slides what is vitamin a how we are getting what is the diet uh, recommendation and why why a need uh, is felt by the masses uh, by the governments that we should give oil or milk fortified with these so vitamin a is required it is just see the distribution as i have shown it is present in yellow and dark green vegetable or in non vegetarian food or butter is also uh, having some vitamin a 
and daily requirement RDA recommended dietary allowance uh, it is thousand retinol equivalent these are the unit in which it is mentioned for me male as well as 800 re for female why it is required why we need this it is required for our visual cycle we can see because of vitamin a it is required for our vision for during growth it is also required in kids it is for their growth reproductive cycle also requires this vitamin a for our skin glowing skin we need uh, our cells need this vitamin a and our immune system and other lymphocytes also they require this vitamin a similarly vitamin d they are steroid steroid compound like you must have heard the name steroids so these are steroid uh, compounds and the biologically active form in our body it is 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol and it regulates plasma levels of calcium and phosphorus so this is just i wanted to show how these vitamins are formed in our body earlier we used to take a plenty of sunlight and whatever precursor if we have cholesterol from cholesterol within the cholesterol our body every cell of our body can make cholesterol and from this salmon dehydrocholesterol in the presence of sunlight we can make d3 that is the active form biological active form d2 and d3 these are ergocalciferol polycalciferol these are the biologically active form which works in our body goes to liver and different acts on kidney and all kind of organs they are required for our body now all we know we are sitting in our rooms all the day at home and we are uh, because of our busy schedule we are not having time to sit in sun and uh, getting sufficient sunlight as west uh, european countries the people they have recognized earlier that because their lifestyle was different from ours uh, 50 years back our life was altogether different and we were not feeling that we should take these vitamins we are living uh, in such an environment that we were having exposure to sun but nowadays our life is like western people so that the thoughts which they have earlier thought about fortification now we have to go for those things in these days so this, this if we talk about distribution it is present in plants as ergocalciferol d2 polycalciferol in animal tissue and both are sources of preformed vitamin D activity. Endogenous, I earlier discussed that our body during the formation of cholesterol from cholesterol, we can get the precursor of vitamin D. So it is also present in animal tissue, milk. Unless it is fortified, it is not good source of vitamin D or RDA is 5 microgram of polycalciferol or 200 international unit of vitamin D. If we don't take these, as you can see, bones become soft in children or stimulatia. So, but when it is taken in excess, it has to be taken care. It becomes toxic. It is highly toxic. Vitamin E, it is also naturally occurring tocopherols. It is normally present in most of the oil. It helps. It is also considered as antioxidant. Okay. And it, uh, it is protective against different diseases because of its antioxidant potential so vegetable are generally rich source of vitamin e liver eggs contain moderate levels similarly there are some recommended doses 10 mg for men and 8 mg for women it is least toxic vitamin k it exists in several form in plants as phylloquinone or k1 in bacterial flora as k2 distribution its deficiency is rarely unusual very unusual so it's not considered as much important so e uh, we will come we will discuss when we will do the uh, fortification uh, why we need as i discussed that our lifestyle has changed we in the fats and oil group vegetable oil is the most widely consumed followed by lead and margarine there is increase in the consumption of refined oil the trend of low fat diet has led to the consumption of insufficient amount of sources of fat soluble vitamins lack of exposure to sunlight has resulted in reduction in the 
uh, ability to synthesize vitamin D. That's why we need, and also the processing. We are all, you have studied processing. When you process oil from crude oil, most of these beta carotene or uh, vitamin E, vitamin, these vitamins are lost. So this is the process. You must have studied crude oil, degumming, neutralization, bleaching, deodorization. Refined oil is only oil and nothing is all. You can see at every step something is being removed. Chlorophyll, carotene, bleaching has removed those. Deodorization, tocopherol, carotenoid, all components. Later on they add it in. So, what is the technology required for fortification? So, we now have come to learn that we need vitamins, vitamin A and D, E, K, which are fat soluble. So, when we are talking about oil and fat, we will be fortifying with these vitamins. Mostly A, D, E is done because I have al already discussed that K is rarely required. It is very limited amount is required and that is met through our diets. So we will be studying how we can add A, D, E in the oil. The dosing of, it is called do dosing of micro ingredients into the oil. It can be done with the same dosing technology used for addition of antioxidant. Antioxidant are vitamin E or tocopherols. As in the earlier slide, I showed that vitamin E is removed during refining, but all the oil industry later on add antioxidant or uh, either artificial or natural to uh, compensate this removal of otherwise oil will become highly unstable to make the oil stable this is a age long technology to add the antioxidant artificial or uh, natural so same technology same machinery can be used to fortify the oil with vitamin a and d in order to ensure uniform mixing of these vitamins the required amount of Vitamins is measured, mixed in small proportion of warm oil, which is then added to the bulk of the oil prior to homogenization. Temperature required assuring uniform mixing for the oil is 40 to 50 degree and for soybean oil, it is about 25 degree centigrade. Mixing liquid with liquid is relatively very easy. A container or a big tank can be used to put oil by pump and to mix the desired quantity of vitamin pre-mixes are nowadays available from the market. You can take the vitamin mix and it can be mixed in oil and then by rotary stainless mixture or the tank which can be equipped with a screw or blade adapted for liquid mixing. So, in our country, November 1952, the Ghee Committee of the Government of India recommended Vanaspati oil. Vanaspati was a dalda ghee, that is, was uh, oils, they were hydrogenated and that is solid form. And it was recommended that it should be fortified with vitamin A and D because the ghee was made from uh, your uh, refined oil. A year later, it was legislation was put in force to make it mandatory to use vitamin A and D for the fortification of Vanaspati ghee. I, considering the scale of this public health crisis, now we all have discussed that vitamin D is deficiency and because of deficiency if of this vitamin D, num because your immune system becomes weak, number of diseases occur. So, in, in a soya bean oil fortification initiative was started in June, Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition and International Development Agency working uh, towards, uh, they also uh, started a support for oil fortification initiative. Margarine fortification is done already in European countries. So, stability, the micronutrient used to fortify. Now, what we have added in the oil, whether it is stable or not, that is also an issue which needs to be checked and addressed. Now, we know that this is a simple technology. Everyone is adding whether it is stable or how we can make it, keep it stable. So, quality of the oil which we have used, that is also a factor to uh, check the stability of your fortified oil. Oxidative stability, how much vitamin E which makes them oil stable was there. How much it is exposed to oxygen. 
what is the storage temperature what is the cooking temperature cooking time storage time packaging keeping on the shelf whether in light or not so if the oil was already partially oxidized it will result in the oxidation of vitamin itself so there will no uh, there will be no use of adding vitamin to the oil so different people have studied during deep frying vitamin a destruction was more retention of vitamin a was sufficient to meet the body when uh, another study showed that how much quantity was added that it was stable similarly fluorescent light commonly used in retail store and household can uh, also induce loss of more than 80% of loss has been reported there are number of other studies i have kept only a few so what are the strategies which are required mandatory or mass fortification of staple food such as milk cereal is mandated and regulated by the government uh, as i said that when the deficiency comes to the masses when it is in some person you can take as a medicine but when it is in masses the food fortification is the only answer to meet that nutrient it is implemented when the majority of the population has a public health serious public health issue of being or becoming deficient in specific micronutrients as in the case of mandatory fortification of milk milk products margarine oil in canada as well as in india also fsci has recommended that vitamin a and e should be fortified and tar targeted fortification is the practice of adding sufficient amount of micronutrient to large population same as in case of some government schemes they are saying pre school school age uh, school going children whatever nutrients they are requiring it should be added in their diet some anemia is uh, in india it is there so iron fortification is recommended it is market driven as i earlier discussed with you that market market driven or voluntary fortification is a prerogative of food manufacturer sometimes it is written it is rich in uh, vitamin it is rich in antioxidant or they are adding some more micronutrients minerals so that is a strategy to sell the products the micronutrients added and the levels of fortification are generally at mass scale they are regulated by the government fortification of oil in india as per the national institute of nutrition nin hyderabad there is a high prevalence of vitamin a and d deficiency among indian population so these institutes study from the their public health uh, sectors during public uh, social studies they find this kind of things and they recommend they give some recommendation they have some dietary recommendation given to the government and they are followed by the people but when these dietary recommendation are not met met they uh, give this kind of recommendation so almost 50 to 90% of the indian population across all socio economic groups not only poor mostly uh, richer people are more deficient in vitamin d those who are living indoors because poor people they go uh, in the sunlight they work in the uh, these uh, uh, during day hours so they are less sufferer as compared to the higher uh, uh, richer people so irrespective of the all socio economic people they are suffering from this deficiency fsci i said the fortification of edible oil with vitamin a and d offers the most feasible and cost effective intervention as at an average every indian is consum consuming fair fairly high edible oil content which is 12 to 18 kg per annum per person as per 2000 data so fortified oil is known to provide 25 to 30% of the recommended dietary allowance for vitamins now the fsci has given this sign f plus for fortified with vitamin a and d and now or you can see when you buy any uh, your uh, oil sachet or the bottles or bigger pouch you will see f sign on that means it shows that the oil is fortified so all the branded uh, companies they have started adding a and d in the fortifying in the oil 
So this is the sine oil uh, plus five F, which is given by FFSAI standards for fortification of vegetable oil for micronutrients. So you can see by fortified food with key vitamins and minerals, uh, it is uh, same sign is on the cooking oil bottle. So by fortification, we can also make the balance of omega-6, omega-3 and can give the health benefits to the public. So if we come to the conclusion that food fortification is being implemented to address the deficiencies of vitamins in numerous countries and India is now also doing the same thing. Fortification of widely consumed food with vitamin A and D could improve consumption of these vitamins and can save the masses from health problems faced due to deficiency. Since the technology requirement for fortification of oil with fat soluble is not costly, so it can be easily adapted and is being adapted as we have seen that most of the companies are selling oil with plus F sign. So to provide these vitamins to vulnerable groups which they cannot afford additional sachet or eating the tablets. So thank you. ma'am hello ah yes ma'am thank you so much ma'am uh, ji participants if you have any question you can write in the chat box or you can unmute yourself you can talk to ma'am and clarify your doubts as i said earlier Yeah. No, yes, ma'am. Dr. Shweta, um, fortification is of two times. One is biofortification and other is only fortification. When you do fortification at the biotechnology or uh, molecular level through breeding and in the crop, that is called biofortification. That can be done and is being done by the people and uh, fortified varieties for different crops are already there. But in oil, if I say vitamin E is the natural, is naturally present in all kind of vegetable oil, but when you process, all these are removed. So it is, it is our requirement that when we are doing processing, we are removing our all nutrients. Although we have made biofortified variety in the cereals or in others, and most of the vitamins and the minerals, they are in the outer covering. When you process, make it in the, the say it is a cereal grain, you remove the bran, hull, hull part, no, those uh, fortificants will be removed. So we have to add in that way, okay? Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, equipment hai jo fortification ke liye aapne uh, Ma'am, I just, uh, it's nothing is required, I say. Nothing? We need, uh, we don't need, you can use a simple mixture and we can have a, we need a container and some blending uh, thing which can blend it. So we That's have it? number of equipment which can be used. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't need so, higher bigger equipment i have shown in my slide you just okay. need a tank we you can get the premix mixer tank just mixing yeah you need yeah, a mixing mixer. tank okay. yeah yeah okay, i thought like uh, for them no they nothing must... is required i just wanted if i can share one uh, fssai has made us uh, this video how you can make blend and how companies are making their blend yeah, if sure. time permits i can share that with you i have opened uh, on my screen Yes, ma'am. We, uh, we will take first the question if uh, I will be able to sh share with you. Otherwise, I will share the link with you. Ma'am, one question, then you can share the link. Uh, okay. While fortifying the oil, while fortifying the oil with vitamins and minerals for the stability during deep frying, what sort of stability aids can be used? What? What sort of uh, stability uh, aids can be used? What type of? What sort of? Stability yeah. can be used. Aapki awaz wahan break ho hai, jo question ka main part hai. What type of? Main bolo. Uh, Ji, aap bolo. Achha, wo, uh, 
while fortifying the oil with vitamins and minerals for their stability during deep frying. What yeah. sort of stability aids are used? Aids. Okay. For the oil stability, as I have discussed, vitamin E is, if we are adding vitamin A and D, but E is not being added. So, anti-oxidation, oil oxidation is prevented by vitamin E. It should be sufficient quantity. And when we know that oil has to be deep fried and for a long time, then the doses should be in that form that during the frying, if something is lost, you get minimum recommended dietary allowance overdose or they have to the companies who are making for selling it as a deep frying oil that should be mentioned that this contains this much amount of the uh, dose of the vitamin thank you ma'am uh, ma'am one more question uh, is there any fsi limits for oil fortification yeah, yeah they are i have given some recommended uh, there are limits are there i will share with you those values for different vitamins is so much quantity should be added in one ton or one liter of a million ton of oil. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you can share the video. Okay, le let's make. Le I will try. Uh, yes, ma'am. If I will be able to show that. Are you able to see this? Uh, yes, ma'am. Dark khana ban raha hai. Yahan lekin baat zayke se kahi aage nikal gayi hai. Vaja hai fortified khana banane ka ye tel, jo swad ke saath laga raha hai, poshan ka bhi tarka. Kyunki tel hamare khana ban ka aham hissa hai. Isliye fortified tel कुपोषण नियंत्रण में प्रभावी भूमिका निभा सकता है। फोर्टिफिकेशन से जुड़े सभी पहलुओं की जानकारी के लिए आइए चलते हैं एक ऑयल मिल में। खाद्य तेल में फोर्टिफिकेशन का पहला कदम है प्रीमिक्स को 40 से 45 डिग्री तक गर्म करना। पांच मीट्रिक टन खाद्य तेल को फोर्टिफाई करने के लिए 100 ग्र प्रीब्लेंड बनाने के लिए इसे कुछ समय चर्निंग या विटामिन टैंक में मिलाना चाहिए। फोर्टिफिकेशन का सही समय है तेल में एंटीऑक्सीडेंट डालने के तुरंत बाद। प्रीमिक्स को स्टोरेज टैंक में रखे तेल के साथ 30 से 40 मिनट तक मिलाया जाता है। अब तैयार है हमारा फोर्टिफाइड तेल। इस तरह फोर्टिफाई और विटामिन डी की मात्रा 2000 आयु होती है। ये समय है टेस्टिंग सैंपल लेने का। सैंपल लेने के साथ ही इसके लेबल पर सैंपल का नाम, दिनांक, समय, बैच नंबर, नमूने की मात्रा आदि की जानकारी और प्रबंधता अधिकारी के हस्ताक्षर होने चाहिए। इस सैंपल से विटामिन्स का क्वालिटेटिव और क्वांटिटेटिव टेस्ट किया जाता है। सबसे पहले करते हैं क्वालिटेटिव टेस्ट इसे रिंग टेस्ट भी कहते हैं इसके लिए एक टेस्ट ट्यूब में 10 मिलीलीटर एंटीबॉडी ट्राइक्लोराइड का घोल लें फिर टेस्ट ट्यूब की दीवार के साथ-साथ 15 मिलीलीटर फोर्टिफाइड तेल डालें घोल और तेल के इंटरफेस पर बनी नीले रंग की रिंग तेल में विटामिन ए की उपस्थिति का संकेत देती है ध्यान रहे यह नीला रंग केवल कुछ ही समय के लिए इंटरफेस पर फिक्सेट होता है और बहुत अस्थिर है। फोर्टिफाइड तेल में विटामिन्स की वास्तविक मात्रा को जानने के लिए क्वांटिटेटिव टेस्ट के लिए 500 ml सैंपल को NABL अधिकृत प्रयोगशाला में भेजें। इन सभी बुनियादी बातों को ध्यान में रखकर हम खाद्य तेलों में फोर्टिफिकेशन के काम को बखूबी अंजाम दे सकते हैं और कर सकते हैं सांतार सपना एक जी मैम थैंक यू मैम